one, it's good for proper sport. It gets exposure to them, more people listening to their other sports shows, mm-hmm. which are now starting to ga- gather sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so that's a positive for them since they've switched to be a national brand rather yeah. than a regional brand. Yeah. Um, and for the Bulls and for the League One clubs, it gives them exposure that they've lost with Toronto going up, which they were happy to take last year because Toronto weren't going to bring any away fans either. Yeah, either yeah, or. Yeah. But actually, all almost every, and I don't know if I wrote something about this at the end of last year or just did the stats and then didn't write something about this. But pretty much every side had their biggest attendance in League One, a, a home game against Toronto. The only, the only exceptions to that were the Cumbrian clubs in particular Barrow because they got that playoff game against Whitehaven which was huge at the end of the season yep. so obviously that was their biggest attended game and I think Whitehaven were the other one mm. um, and they had an early season game against Toronto where the pitch shouldn't have been played on anyway oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that might have influenced that. I think it was that one there was one other anyway and yeah. obviously York got set their record ever attendance Last yeah. year in the Bradford yeah, game, yeah. and then did great in the in the Bradford game. Now it's a lot closer, York. So you're going to go anyway. Yeah, if you're going, yeah, sort of thing from Bradford. I mean, it's basically what forty minutes. So and there's direct trains and stuff <laughs> like that. It's a lot different going to Workington. You might be part of the travel, but if you're part of the travel, you're part of the travel anyway. Yeah, you exactly. To it on yeah. the radio or whatever. Everyone listens to live stream through the radio nowadays, and and that sort of stuff. So yeah, no, there I, you go. I agree. So we're we're for streaming. If anyone wants, if anyone wants our services uh, to commentate on streaming matches, <laughs> get in touch with me. Um, just make sure that it's not uh, limited by language. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, from um, from that, where I I kind of don't feel either team took total credit out of the situation no, no. <laughs> the way it was it was handled, but on the field, working to took the bragging rights. Um, we move now on to the Super League match reviews. Okay, so it's the Super League match reviews now, sponsored by... What are you pointing at? Sorry, I wanted you to write the time down. I just thought, because you, you'd forgot last time. Oh, no, I've written it down. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the Super League match reviews is sponsored by Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. Find a wi- this is why I enjoy doing the live <laughs> ones. You get a bit more. There's a bit more spontaneity yeah. and humour drops in. Uh, find a wide range of toys, gifts, rugby league birthday cards and more at Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. Visit stores.ebay.co.uk forward slash Rob's Toy Shop and any orders over £5 you can earn 5% cash back you can also give 1% of your order value then to SLP as well by putting in SLP discount at checkout um, so you can give some money to SLP without it costing you anything at all um, and if you want to give more more than the 1% if you want to give all your 5% to SLP then uh, Rob will entertain that notion too you just have to send him a message after you've made your order and tell him you want to support SLP um, okay, so um, round 10 of Super League it was this weekend, the, the third of the Easter games, the uh, traditionally the one that people kind of forget about being the most jaded, but then we get reminded constantly on Sky, so it's yeah. okay. <laughs> um, and the average attendance this week across the Super League had dropped from a couple of 9,000 weeks to 7,075, I would say. Salford. Well, <laughs> Salford being at home is a factor, <laughs> yeah. but Wigan leads. And Hull FC being away, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, three, the three highest attended sides being away um, is also a factor. But um, and Warrington were away; they're, they're the fifth highest attended side. Yeah. So, so you go. Uh, but yeah, um, the first game on the Friday night, the ones with the toughest ask, I suppose, were St Helens and Hull FC. Um, after a slow first half of six nil, it ended up twenty six twelve to the top of the table. St Helens side in front of ten thousand four hundred and eight. Robert Hicks was the man with the miss with the whistle and with the missing forward passes. <laughs> um, do you want to take us through the fan views firstly? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So this was from uh, Sarah from Scoots. Um, Saints were fi- uh, by far and away the better team, more direction and better speed. Last ten minutes, we showed some nice touches, but need to play for eighty minutes. Uh, being two interchanges down um, in third match in eight days is never going to help. Missed Minnie and Mano's direction and impact. 
textbook pass from Kelly's try, and that's got uh, <laughs> lots of laughy face uh, emoticons. That's uh, straight out of Peyton Manning's playbook, wasn't it? The, uh, the it, was, <laughs> it was definitely beyond the Galilean <laughs> transformation of was a forward pass. Yeah, AK Steel sixty nine says Saints are a very good team. Taya was great, and their defense in general was very tight. Thought we lacked a bit of grunt going forward, and Saints consistently won the rook with both those resulting in a lack of possession in attacking parts of the field. No complaints about the results. Saints were just better on the night. Also, wasn't it great to see Dave Blunkett make his debut on the touchline? <laughs> uh, Shoddy and Mungo, uh, I'm sure there will be lots of feedback around some of the referee decisions, but Saints never really looked in trouble on this one, even without the default man of the match choice on the pitch. <laughs> uh, yeah, Roby went off, didn't he? And was it, was that, well, was Ben it? Barber will get to oh, that. I'm on Ben Barber, yeah, yeah. But Alan doesn't need to worry because yeah. um, St. David didn't get his review yeah. this time. Yeah. <laughs> but POB1976 did, and he said, Another win for the Saints. Not the best of games, but what can you expect from teams who have played three times in eight days? Can't believe Ben Barber was not nominated for Man of the Match. <laughs> Thought he was playing the amount of times Sky mentioned his name. <laughs> uh, Joshua's granddad. Uh, no complaint beaten by the better team. Two interchanges light and lack of punch from second row didn't help. Kick return poor without Talanoa. Great sleight of hand by Logan to put Kelly in for his try. Uh, why Richardson felt a need to play act, not sure. That was the uh, was that the, the, the tackle from... That Kush, was the on, tackle, on wasn't it? Yeah, from, yeah. from Jordan yeah. Abdul, yeah. Um, that was one of the other controversial refereeing decisions, I, I think, from Saints fans' perspective, because they'd seen... Uh, their forward, who's Luke Douglas, right, uh, gets right, him yeah, in, didn't yeah, he, the week yeah. before, for a similar-ish, but actually, when you look at them in isolation, mm-hmm. quite different tackle. One was a player falling back and not giving space to get his head down. The other one was a player kind of cramming in, forward into the player. Yeah. A bit more difficult to give them space as a tackling player, I, I would suggest there. But anyway, yeah. Phil Nadian we finished with, he said, this was a tough game for both teams after the Easter weekend. The first half was a show of great defensive play from both teams. Saints struck first after seven minutes with a great jump and catch from Tyre. Hull played well to keep it only one try in the first half. But the second half was too much in the end as Saints showed why they are top. Kelly scored to start a comeback from a good flat pass, but it was not to be. So, so yeah, I mean, shall we start with that video? Sorry, with that forward pass. Yeah, I mean, and just get it out. Of yeah. <laughs> Um, it was a very, very forward pass. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen a. Uh, oh, the, the, I mean, there was a couple of forward passes actually in the. Um, um, definitely one in the in the Warrington game the day after uh, that, that got sort of missed as well. But uh, but that, that was uh, that was. This way one forward. was something yeah, else. So this yeah. wasn't like a, yeah. a borderline kind of hard to spot at the speed of play and that sort of thing. It was. It went. Did it go over two pitch yeah. lines? I mean, yeah. It felt like it was that. I mean, it certainly yeah. went clear over one and. Yeah. And yeah, it was it was a bad miss by the match officials. Um, they, they make mistakes. I feel like that was the only genuine mistake that I thought was made in this game by the, by the match officials. So you know, it was a horror show, and there's some decisions you can't defend as much yeah. as we like to defend the refs. Uh, it didn't affect the overall result in the end either. So uh... no, no, it was never never going to. So injuries is the second thing to touch on, I suppose. How much do you think the whole? Injuries in that first half. Brad Fash, unfortunate to get a broken jaw in his first ever start. <laughs> um, j- probably was just about to go off for a breather <laughs> as well, I bet. And uh, for Tuli Talano was a big one. His calf uh, injury basically meant that they were left without a recognised winger in the side with Logan mm-hmm. not being a, a full-on winger and, and Griffin had to fill in there, didn't he? But Jake Connor could come off the bench and fill in the outside back. And then for Saints, um, I suppose Roby is Roby, the, yeah, yeah. the injury which is situation ribs. there, yeah. I think he's popped a rib cartilage or something like. That. Didn't yeah. it look like he was in a bit of pain? And he doesn't normally, obviously, he normally plays eighty minutes as much as possible. He probably might have come off for a little bit in this game with the result like it was, but it looked like a bad one. And a lot of dream teams yeah. wanted to reach up on. But then Smith came on and did a really good job at hooker. I thought it did, it did, it did okay, didn't he? Well, Saints <laughs> scored um, almost as many points after Roby went off as they scored with Roby on. So. Yeah. You know, but yeah. now I... <laughs> it, yeah, I know you love. Uh, I know that, I mean, he's a great player, isn't he, Robbie? And and he, yeah. he's good. Any any team's gonna gonna miss him. It's gonna be. It's gonna be interesting to see how because how they, they clearly looked to me a little bit sluggish in attack mm-hmm. without Ben Barber to add that extra zip. Lomax didn't yeah. play badly, no. but the timing was off a few times. Yeah, certainly the first half, they kind of I think they didn't really take advantage of opportunities. 
that field position gave them. I think I've seen that a few times with Saints. So uh, they're they're almost kind of probing and 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 softening up in the first half. Uh, yeah, uh, and and then uh, and then they they sort of uh, in the second half. That's when they they do all their damage and, and score the tries. That, that it's certainly in the games that I've seen them play this this year. Um, but yeah, they they were doing some great kicks. I thought Saints. They were like the kicking was was brilliant into that corner. Yeah, and, was it? Um... Was it Farge who put up the first kick for Tyre, or was it Richardson? Either way, yeah, it was yeah. a, a brilliant kick. <laughs> yeah, I saw Wilkin put a kick in in the corner as well. You know, like, like which uh, your the, your the, old yeah, mate Jack. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, th- I think you know that they were they were and they were all landing in that same spot, perfect. You know, not uh, right in front of the try line. Yeah, in not corner. giving them the option for seven yeah, tackles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, it was it just a. Considering that it is a jaded performance yeah. from them, they still got so much more polish than, than than a lot of other teams. And it allowed them to restrict Hull by turning the ball over that close to Hull's line. And when yeah. Hull were, were interchanges down, they were never going to have the energy to pull off anything creative at the other end of the field. Now they're not they're not creating a lot Hull no. this year so far. But um, but yeah, when you you're going to be gassed. You're not going to. Yeah. You're not going to make the right decisions at the other end of the field. I would suggest. Was there any players that stood out for you other than anyone we've mentioned so far? Um, I think uh, uh, oh, Luke Thompson. Um, he's, Back to he's, form, yeah, 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 he was doing. He was doing some good stuff. Um, Albert Kelly, I thought, played pretty well for Hull. He was. Uh, he was sort of busy and uh, industrious and and uh, did he break the line a couple of times. Or yeah, I think the thing with Kelly was he. He seemed to be playing almost by himself, so he was getting himself into a lot of situations, getting the ball out, but mm-hmm. not. But it wasn't leading to other stuff because I don't think other people were necessarily going with him, and I felt that was yeah. probably due to the tiredness aspect that, yeah, that yeah. the team had. But yeah, Kelly himself did did try, didn't he? I just yeah. think there wasn't that much going with him. I was impressed again by Makinson. Um, oh yeah, I just, <laughs> I just love his directness when he's running the ball. Yeah, it's. It's something that there's not too many... I see so much now wingers stuttering, trying to step mm-hmm. a little bit or, or that sort of stuff, especially with some of the Wigan players. Some of the Wigan outside backs really do seem to like to do that a lot. But um, but Makinson just doesn't, does he? He, yeah. he, picks his, he picks his line straight away and he's going to go for it, whatever. And it gets him... It gets Saints off to great starts in their sets. Yeah. So, so I like that. Um... Yeah, I think uh, that that's. I, I would say the try that Hull scored at the end was as good as any of the Saints try. As Chris Green's try, but obviously we yeah. completely forgot <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah. But there was about three or four offloads in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was quite an entertaining try, but we're never going to watch it. Yeah. Again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they're all the brimming with confidence. Saints, you can tell, and the uh, um, they're all they're just. The, like people like Zeb Taylor who were you know dog shit last year, I thought. And uh, yeah, he was. Th- he was. An, he was an error a half last year. And yeah. At the moment this year, he's almost yeah. like a a try or a try assist a half kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. Uh, and Peru is another one I thought yeah, into yeah. that bracket. <laughs> um, and I'd say Wilkin. Douglas <laughs> is another one that fits in, into that bracket. Yeah, working yeah. to an extent. The, yeah. The really and and so they're not feeling the loss of Wormsley like they would have done last year when yeah. he was so important because all these other lads are stepping up. Yeah, Kyle Amor uh, likes to milk a penalty. I, I think he's got, he just... Uh, he, he, you can see him sort of trying yeah. to... Yeah, he, he was do, I was watching him do it at the um, at the, uh, the this hour game they get against yeah. us like a few weeks ago and it, uh, yeah, he was doing that, that again this, this week, I thought. Is, uh, but Fair yeah, enough. yeah strong, strong player though. Yeah, um, stats. Uh, this this game, right? It saw the most missed tackles slash tackle bus because they go hand in hand yeah. um, so far this year. So, and after a busy Easter schedule, this game also had the highest number of carries in a game so far this year. Over four hundred in this game. Wow. It's about thirty or forty more than the next highest game in terms of carries per game. Yeah. Um, and the highest number of successful offloads, thirty six. Yeah. So it's not a shock, really, that there's some tired tackling <laughs> on the show, given all that, all those carries that people had to try and defend. Um, yeah, Saints won hugely on the numbers, though. Four hundred and twenty four more meters, uh, one point three meters per carry, better average, two more breaks, three point six percent better team tackle success. Even though they had a poor ninety percent success rate overall, that was still a much better performance from Saints than it was from Hull FC. So, really, I think fatigue hit 
Hull FC more with the with the injury situation in the game and, and Saints playing as well as they are, like you say, we're able to build into the game and totally capitalise that, yeah. that in the second half. Um, individually, Zeb Taya, two tries, 145 metres, two clean breaks. Luke Thompson, a try, 151 metres. Mark Percival, one try, 40. 40-